Praise God. Hello, Tucson. So glad, uh, glad to be here uh, this morning and enjoying this wonderful weather. Get away from Russia. Uh, this is my first international tri uh, trip since March last year. Uh, don't ask me how I got away, uh, but I got away, and uh, here I am in this place. You know, we have connections with them. Uh, <laughs> praise God. Yeah. People ask me, how did you get away? I have connections with KGB. I've been telling, you know, I've been, I've been, I mean, they, they, we know how to make things happen. We know we can do this, everything, we can do it. So anyway, but uh, uh, we're doing good. Uh, we had a conference in September. We sent out nine couples uh, out of our conference, praise God. Um, uh, we, had, uh, we have three more international churches, Romania, uh, Serbia, and, uh, and Belarus. Uh, these nations, two of them have never had churches of our fellowship, uh, and now they are on the map of our fellowship, so we go, we're praising God for uh, that. Uh, so during that conference, we had a major uh, COVID outbreak. Uh, thank you, Pastor Sergey. Everybody got sick with COVID in our church, and they went uh, all over the world, uh, well, Russia, uh, and in different uh, places. All the delegates went back, uh, had COVID, but by the grace of God, we survived. No one was uh, uh, even in any serious condition. Uh, so uh, we joke now that our church is the safest place in town uh, because we have all, all of us have anti uh, antibodies. So. Uh, I am so thankful for Pastor uh, uh, Warner and Pastor King to invite me uh, to preach. Uh, me and my wife, uh, on behalf of my wife, appreciate your friendship. We had a podcast uh, yesterday with Pastor Warner. I was able to share some of the uh, highlights of the uh, ministry in Russia. Uh, so looking forward to what God uh, is going to do in this place this morning. Praise God. Do you know that the Holy Spirit is here? And, uh, and, and there are people in this place, you are uh, right now sitting in this place, and you are tormented with a headache. I want you to pray right now, put your hand on your head, uh, just right now, right now, as I speak right now. You, God doesn't want you to suffer through my sermon, okay? Uh, it, that would be horrible if you have to sit through my uh, preaching and, uh, and suffering and, and battling your headache. Put your hand on your, on your head right now, on your forehead, and say this with me. Father, I forgive everyone who hurt me. Forgive me for every word that I spoke of bitterness, resentment. And I ask you to heal my uh, head right now of any headache, lingering headache. In Jesus' name, I pray right now, Father, Touch them in this place. I pray, God, minister to them right now. And I give you glory and, and praise. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God. Uh, let's give God praise right now. Father, we thank you. I glorify your name. Glorious God. Uh, hallelujah. So if you got healed, you have no headache, you came, you had it just now, and it's gone. Lift up your hand. We're going to praise God. There's one sister here, one sister over there, somebody else. I'm somebody else. I'm looking, and there is another person right there. Okay, somebody else, there's somebody else, yeah, back there, a brother against the wall there, a man, somebody else, somebody else. God is so good. In this section right here, you have, a, you have pain in your right knee, and God is telling me, even during the worship service, that you, wanna, you, you, you are praying for your knee, but the, uh, the, the pain is still there, but by, right now, God is touching you. Somebody in this section, somebody in this section, you had a pain in your right knee, and it's gone now. Is it gone now? Is it gone now? It's gone now. Is it Gabe? I don't know, the masks. You are. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give God praise right now. Father, we thank you. Jesus, you are awesome and righteous and glorious God. Let's believe God for some supernatural uh, manifestation of his presence in this place uh, this morning and tonight, okay? Let's open our Bibles to John, John chapter 7. Uh, John, Gospel of John chapter 7. I want to minister on the living water uh, this um, uh, morning. So there is plenty of living of, of water everywhere in, in where I come from. Uh, it's uh, filled with swamps, a lot of lakes, creeks, a lot of rivers, and uh, all around us. But in Israel, water is not just H2O, not just a hydrogen oxide, but it has a spiritual significance for the nation of Israel. Why? Because through water, 
the Israelites experience their relationships with God. If you don't understand this concept, Deuteronomy 28 speaks these words in verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. So in this text, the word of God speaks very clearly that uh, they knew that then when they kept the commandments, there was water. When they did not keep their, the commandments of the Lord, uh, there will be no water. They had a festival, uh, and still do in Israel, the festival of Sukkot, or Feast of Tabernacles, as we know it in the, in the Bible, right after Yom Kippur where uh, the Jews would live in tents for seven days as a commemoration of what transpired during their uh, pilgrimage in uh, the desert uh, uh, after leaving Egypt. And uh, there is a spe special prayer uh, that is done by Jews even to this day on the last day of that Feast of the Tabernacles, and that prayer is for the rain. There is a beautiful Hasidic proverb that goes like this, somewhere in Poland, uh, in the synagogue, Jews once were praying for some rain. The little Jewish boy looked at the, out the window while these men were praying, and with trickles of water running down the glass, and he asked his father, he said, uh, why are, you, are we praying for the rain, Daddy? Isn't it raining cats and dogs outside? And his dad, uh, uh, his dad looked at him and answered and said, son, because uh, this is not our reign. We are praying for the reign in our nation, in the land of Israel. See, for the Jews, real reign is what waters beautiful lands and hills of the land of Israel. And because of that, through this, through water, the Israelites experience their relationships with God. I said all this to read John 7 so that you could understand the, the concept that is Jesus is sharing this morning uh, in our text. In verse 37 of John 7, and on the last great day of the feast, Jesus uh, stood and cried out, saying, He who thirsts, come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, according to the scripture, rivers of living water will flow from the womb, verse 39, this he said of the spirit which the believers in him had to receive, for there was not yet the Holy Spirit upon them, because Jesus was not yet glorified. So in verse 37 of our text, he's speaking on the last day of the feast. We know which, which day it is, because in the chapter, same chapter, uh, verse 2, uh, he, uh, the Bible speaks now the Jews' uh, uh, feast of tabernacles was uh, at hand. And here he is on the last day of that feast. And he cries out, the Bible says. The, the Greek word that he's using is the word krazo. And it is a very strong uh, Greek word uh, that was used to describe a scream or a loud exclamation that uh, would come out in a moment of sorrow or anguish or suffering or a desperate need or fear. It's very interesting that Je when Jesus was on the cross and he cried out, it is finished. The same word was used by the author of the New Testament, authors of the New Testament, describing the word krazo. And here is Jesus on the last day of tabernacle. And he clears his voice, he raises his voice up, and he cries out, and he says, he says, if anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink. That was the last day of the tabernacles. So they were praying for water. And Jesus started to scream and shout and saying to them, if anyone is thirsty, come to me and drink. See, it's a promise of God, church. God's promise this morning is to give water freely. 
In Isaiah 55:1, everyone who thirsts, thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy ma, 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 wine and milk without money and without price. And so the need for water is satisfied, and Jesus says, if you are thirsty, if anyone is thirsty, Jesus is crying out, if any Anyone is thirsty. I wonder this morning how many of us, as we are entering 2021, the year of change, come on, somebody, the year of a breakthrough, how many of us sitting in this place and you are thirsty and you are hearing those words of Jesus Christ. If anyone is thirsty, come. If anyone is thirsty, come freely. I will give to you the water of uh, life. See, it's very clear in our text. If you need water, you will get it. If you are thirsty for that water, you will be satisfied. Here is Jesus with the woman at the well. And John 4, 16, the woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst nor come here to draw. And he says, I am the one that stands right before you. He is the source of the living water that will satisfy your needs, your desires, and your heart forever and ever. And you will not thirst any longer. See, there is an understanding just as much as the Jews needed water and could not survive without it and still cannot survive over there in Israel without the sources of water that they have. Just as the rain for them was, was the evidence and still is the evidence of their relationships with God, as much so the Holy Spirit his presence in His work in our lives is the only evidence of our relationships with God. And that's why the Holy Spirit's work and presence is something that we need to crave and thirst and desire as a number one thing in our life. That's why Jesus said in verse 39 of our text, this He said of the Spirit, he was not talking about water when, he, when they're praying for water on the last day of the tab Feast of the Tabernacles. He's not talking about water. He's talking about the presence of his spirit, he says, which the believers in him had to receive, for there was not yet the Holy Spirit upon them because Jesus was not yet glorified. See, without the Holy Ghost, we are nothing. His presence is revealed by the presence of his spirit. Salvation and miracles and the power of God, all of these things depended on His presence, on His work in our churches and in our lives. The fruit is of the Spirit. It's not you know, humanistic change of character, making people better. Gospel, the gospel does not make people better by itself. We are not a club where people are getting, becoming better socially, and more intelligent. I am ministering to these drug addicts. I am telling you this one thing for sure. These people will not be helped by, helped by a, a social club. They can only be helped by the transforming power of the presence of His mighty Spirit. The operation of the gifts of the Spirit, the mani manifestation of the Holy Spirit work in our daily lives. See, we have to be very careful, church, because we can have the form, but not the substance. We, we can have the creed, but not the reality. We can talk about Him without the reality of ever experiencing His glory and His power. I'm worried about the kids raised in our church that they will be the victims of this. And they are the victims of this very thing that I'm describing to you. I was raised in the revival. When I got saved, our church was just starting, I was 18, the Holy Spirit was in full operation. We had 
seen demonic manifestations. We've seen the healing of every kind. When uh, the pastor would announce that the evangelist is coming, we would uh, do some extra repenting because uh, we knew that uh, the words of knowledge and the words of wisdom would be uh, uh, coming out of the mouth of the evangelist. And we were frightened and we would do some extra repenting just in case. And I contribute my salvation and my discipleship the process of my sanctification, the decisions that I made personally to leave sin and this world and deny it and follow Christ and follow my calling. I contribute this to the only thing that I can contribute this. People ask this all the time. How and come, how come, you know, in two years, less than two years, I found myself, after salvation, I found myself preaching the gospel. I was 20 years of age. And if you will start, you know, taking this apart, what happened, what's the gimmick there, what's the formula there, I would contribute this to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that was evident in that church, evident in that ministry. And that's why it, it worries me that our kids, they grow in Christian homes where people once received and they have once experienced, but now running on inertia of their previous experience and uh, old revelation and it's uh, lost its life and power. I hope you don't know anybody like this in this church. You know, it's a frightening test. I preached this in my church and I asked my people, I, I, I spoke to them and I asked them, that's the question that I asked them, listen to this, suppose if one day he was not there anymore, who is going to notice his absence? That's a good question, right? That's a legit question. How are we going to notice that he's not in our church? Because the other question that follows up to this is how do we know that he is here? But what signs do we know that he is present in our midst? See, some people, I, I'm afraid that some people, they don't even know the answer to that question. They do not see the difference between the Holy Spirit-filled life and a good, decent, moral life. They, they, and there is no difference at first glance. Or we mistake the Holy Spirit's presence with the soulish outburst of emotions, which is totally carnal, but it pleases the flesh. And people love it. And we know that the word of God warns us that when the time comes to an end, there will be a lot of preachers that will tickle our ears and they will be ple pleasing to the soulish and carnal nature. Everybody has a soulish carnal nature. I have a soulish carnal nature. It kicks in once in a while. How do we know the difference? You could feel the same in opera or at a concert or a, or a football game. You know, sometimes I watch the charismatic worship services and you see emotions, you see a performance, you see a beautiful performance, lights and uh, music and uh, powerful presentation. The question is, is this the work of the Holy Spirit? If this is the work of the Holy Spirit, then we need money for the Holy Spirit to work. A lot of cash. <laughs> then he cannot work in Bolivia then. He, can, he cannot work in favelas of Brazil. He cannot work in the jungle of Burma. There is no way because, you know, the, the, these people, those people, they don't have cash. See, we can feel that we are awake, but we can be asleep. And it's a frightening thing. 
On the 14th of August, 2005, a flight operated by Helios Airlines, not Helios to Helios, took off from the island of Cyprus. Shortly after the takeoff, the plane stopped, uh, responding to the air traffic uh, uh, controls, controllers in Athens. They just were not responding. Two Greek Air Force F-16 fighters jets were scrambled. Their pilots reported that the plane's captain was absent from the cockpit. When they came closer to the plane, uh, to this Boeing, uh, they saw that the co-pilot was slumped over the controls. F-16 pilots reported that the oxygen masks could be seen hanging, hanging from the cabin ceiling. Passengers were there, unresponsive. They actually saw them in uh, the, the windows of the, of the plane. And uh, what happened was there was a loss of cabin pressure, and it incapacitated the crew. All those on board eventually became unconscious as the plane flew on on autopilot for nearly two more hours until it ran out of fuel and crashed, killing all the 115 passengers and six crew members. The incident went into history as a flight that fell asleep. You know, it's, it's scary when you think about it. Those F-16 pilots were there. They, could, they were in a, in a proximity to this doomed plane. Those people were there. They were still alive. There was uh, still an opportunity to salvage their lives. Theoretically, something could have happened. They're still alive, but no one was alive. Uh, they were all asleep. Uh, and in two hours later, that plane crashed, killing all of those people. That could be our church this morning. I'm speaking about my own church. I'm speaking about everyone's church. It could be your family this morning. It could be your spiritual life this morning. Of the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ said in John 16, 8, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That is the sign of his presence. It's not tingling in between your fingers. It's not tears in your eyes. I, I love tears. I mean, I am a, a, a responsive uh, person. You know, I respond to some, you know, I, I'm a more, an emotional person. That's what I am. But, but that, that is not the presence of the Holy Spirit. Conviction on the church of God. Glorified Christ comes and convicts the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. See, when people approach the living God in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Bible says he was a consuming fire. Two sons of Aaron learned this an awful way. In Leviticus 10, 3, by, who, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people, I must be glorified. Exodus eleven twenty two. also let the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves, lest, lest the Lord break out against them. Ephesians 4.30, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. See, there has to be a godly fear in our services. There has to be. Things should get exposed through the preaching of the Word of God, through the singing of the Word of God, through the testimonies in the concert. Hidden sins should be uncovered. People should get delivered. They should get delivered through the preaching of the Word of God. That's the proof of the real presence of God. I am doing a series, a Bible study, Sunday school series right now that is called uh, The More Excellent Way. You know how Paul said, he said, uh, desire spiritual gifts and I will show you the more excellent way. 
And I, I, I want to tell you, you know, I mean, that, is, that has to be the desire of our hearts. Paul was trying to tell the Corinthian church there is a more excellent way. Desire spiritual gifts. Whoever thirsts is thirsty, come to me and drink, said Jesus Christ. That he spoke of the presence of the Holy Spirit. The blessed results is revealed to us in verse 38. Look at this. Whoever believes in me, according to the scripture, rivers of living water will flow from the womb. When I go to Prescott, I uh, go normally twice a year. It's always either January or July. January is a winter. July is a dead, hot summer. I've only seen a desert. i never seen any other way. And one time I had a privilege. I don't know how, but I ended up in Prescott in May. And I was, as I was driving my wife and I from Phoenix to Prescott in May, month of May, I, I couldn't believe it. I thought I, I couldn't recognize the terrain. I, I, I thought we were doing it's a different road or something. Because for years, imagine 12 years in a row, January, July, January, July. Jan and then I'm, I'm looking at this blossoming, you guys, an incredible amount of multicolored flower bed. And I, I, I'm looking at this. I, I'm, am, I, am I driving the same? You know, are, we, are we lost? Are we going somewhere else? And I, I, I told Pastor Mitchell, and he said to me, that's because of rains. See, we need the rain of the Holy Spirit. The yoke will be destroyed only by the anointing oil. Isaiah 10, 27, it shall come to pass in the day that the burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil and he spoke of the Holy Spirit. See, anointing oil is the symbol of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost ministry is the ministry of power and deliverance. The rivers of living water has an illusion of the rivers flowing from the temple in the vision of Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 47. Remember how he cautiously steps into the water until he's unable to control its powerful flow. And when he gets out, out of the river into the banks, he sees all these powerful trees with leaves. And, uh, they, and he sees this tremendous revival because he has given himself to the flow of the Holy Spirit's presence. In verse 12 of that chapter, along the bank of the river, on this side and on that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. Their lives will not wither and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for good, uh, for food rather, and their leaves uh, for medicine. The Bible speaks of fruitfulness. And the blessing of God as the result of that rain. Don't you want it, church? People of God, don't, don't you desire this? Instead of the des desert, uh, you know, the life that is filled with struggles and deserts, uh, all of a sudden, uh, you know, the, it turns into a blossoming spring, and all of a sudden, there is this powerful change that is going to take place, uh, and this is coming, church. This is coming. 2021, it's coming. The deliverance that God promises. It was said of Samson that when the Spirit of the Lord would come upon him, the ropes on his arms would become like chattered flax and the bindings dropped from his hands. See, the Holy Spirit is the powerful uh, agent of deliverance in our lives. Do you need deliverance? Don't try gimmicks. Don't try psychological courses. Don't try humanism. The only real solution to your deliverance this morning is this altar and you yourself submitting to the will of God and saying, I want you. Remember what Jesus said, come, if you thirst, come and I will give you this water. 
Jesus proclaimed in Nazarene, Nazarene synagogue, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to set at liberty those who are oppressed. In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with his power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. This world needs deliverance, church. This world needs the power and deliverance, and if that is present, there is no end to what God can do in our lives and through our church and through our ministry. I believe this wholeheartedly. You know, we hated, uh, uh, all the preachers will agree with me, we hated being a TV, TV evangelist, you know, during the lockdown. But you know, so many good things have happened during that time. It's unbelievable, church. I have testimony upon testimony of people watching our services, praying the prayer at the end of, uh, you know, during the altar calls, uh, and getting, I, I'm, I'm getting all kinds of uh, testimonies of powerful healings and deliverance that have taken place. People are sending pictures. Tumors are gone. Breast tumors are gone. Uh, tumors in all kinds of places of the bodies are being healed. Unstoppable amount of different uh, testimonies of God touching lives. I can tell you the Spirit of God was at work. I remember very specifically, I am pre preaching at my house and uh, the church is in a total lockdown, uh, March or April uh, of last year, and I am uh, praying on the camera, my son, my daughter, my family. There is no church there is no people. I'm believing God that there are there out there somewhere b behind those lenses. And God is speaking to me. And I point like a, t I mean, I'm not kidding you. Like a hundred percent, you're blown away to be evangelist. Looked into the camera, looked into the uh, lenses and said, uh, I see you. You are standing right there. I described the, the, the clothing of that person. I, I said, you are standing in front, behind, right behind you is a white curtain. You have pain in this part of your body and God has healed you uh, right now. And uh, in fact, it happened. Uh, uh, we have the chat, you know, with the YouTube uh, 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 trans, um, uh, 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 channel and there they, they started saying, reports and this one girl this one lady said pastor you won't believe it I, I saw things I seriously I saw somebody see you're sitting right now on a chair you're kneeling against your table and God is healing your knees or your, your your legs all kinds of wonderful things have transpired during that time because church listen not by power or might nor by power but by my spirit saith the Lord of hosts in Zechariah <laughs> see See, see, church, we have to be able to say in unison with the Apostle Paul that my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of the power. That our faith asserted not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. See, what, what cannot be achieved after hours of counseling, training, and theorizing can be set loose in seconds by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you want it? Are you thirsty this morning? Let this not be your regular church service. Let this be your moment, your moment of coming closer, your moment of fulfillment of your life and in feeling of his presence. Let's go to work. Let's bow down, uh, bow our, our, our hearts before the Lord and let's go to work in response to what God is telling us this morning. I'm believing God. I'm praying, God, oh, I pray right now that you would touch lives and hearts in this place. I pray for deliverance. Oh, God, there are people here that are filled with resentment. They are confused. 
There are people here that are uh, struggling because of the uh, financial situation. God, there are people that need your, your comfort. There are people here, people of your people, God, uh, your people, Jesus. And I pray right now for the outpouring of your spirit upon this church. I want to speak to those that are here and you are a visitor in this place. Maybe you came here for the first time, somebody invited you, maybe you're watching me online and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. By this I mean that you've never met Him in a personal way. You know of Him, but you've never had experienced the power of Jesus Christ. Listen, it's, it's, the Christianity is not the religion of the mind. It is the religion of the experience. The genuine experience of Christ. That He died on the cross. That He paid a price for our sins of humanity. He came blameless Lamb of God. Absolutely innocent. But He was made sinner for us. Think of all the horrible things that this world has, has done. Think of the rape. Think of the molestation. Think of the murders. He was made a sinner for all of us. Suffered on a bloody cross, church. And if you're sitting in this place or you're watching me online, if, if you want, you, you want that a real experience, real, real deliverance, you are sick and tired of your life. You don't want to live th this way any longer. You are tired of your sin. You're tired of your hiding up, covering up. Jesus is touching you right now. Wherever you're sitting in this audience, unsaved, or maybe you're backslidden, but you came here because you're looking for your answers, and God wants to touch your life right now, wherever you're sitting in this audience. If you want Jesus, if you want Him to come to, into your life and change and transform you, you, you want uh, to lift your hand right now and signify with your uplifted hand, this is me, Pastor, pray for me. I need that prayer of forgiveness. I need that prayer. Anybody? Yes, I see that hand back there. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Front to back, left to right. Anyone? Young or old? Anyone in this place, see your hand, sister, thank you. I appreciate that hand. Somebody else, somebody else, anybody else in this place, God's touching your life. Yes, I see your hand, sister, thank you. A teenager in this place, yes, I see your hand, thank you. A teenager in this place, I raised you, you were, you were, you were uh, raised up in church, but you exactly know what I'm talking about right now. And you need to come to Christ, come to Christ, the glorified the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, on the bloody cross for you and I. Anybody else? Lift your hand up. Okay, you lifted your hands. Can, can you please look up at me? Do you really mean this, sir? Yes? Can you please start uh, moving uh, to towards this platform? We're going to pray with you. A sister over here. You lifted your hand. You lifted your hand. Please look up at me. Please look up at me. Sister, you lifted your hand. You lifted your hand. If you lifted your hand, please come up here to this platform. Come to, come to this altar right now. Just stand up from your, from your seat uh, and come here. Anybody else that I didn't notice, just come. Just come because we want to pray with you. We want to pray. We don't want to embarrass you, but we're going to pray with you. You lifted your hand. Yes, please come. Please come. God is touching lives. You lifted your hand, sir, in the middle aisle. Hola, Señor. Praise God. So we're going to pray. Somebody else. Somebody else. If you are watching this online... And if you are convinced by the Holy Spirit, you know, you're wondering what uh, kind of a, a, a prayer to pray, pray with me right now. Just bow your, uh, bow your head and close your eyes and pray this with me. Say, Father, I know that you sent your son Jesus Christ because you loved me. And I know that he died on that cross and paid for my sin. And I ask you to forgive me of all my unrighteousness, of all my sin. And come into my life. I pronounce you my Lord and my Savior. And I will obey you from now on. Please change my life. And I will follow you. In Jesus' name. Amen. The church of Jesus Christ in this place. A wonderful the door church in Tucson. God is dealing with us about the Holy Spirit. About His presence. The living water that Jesus has told us. He screamed. He shouted. 
he rose his voice and he said, if anyone's thirsty, don't pray for the rain, come to me. And if you're here in this place, you are a, a married man and you need direction for your family. Stop being a, a person that is re re reacting to difficulties and hardships. Uh, be a man of God. You are thirsty, come to him. You're a woman, you're a, a, a mother that is uh, looking at your teenage children wondering, what can I do? What can I, how can I salvage these kids? If anyone is thirsty, come to me. God is touching lives right now. You're thirsty. And you are here in this place. God's God is touching your heart. He's pulling on you. You need to respond to this altar. Let's all stand to our feet right now, wherever you are. Stand to your, uh, your feet uh, and let's open these altars. If God is touching you, God's going to do something powerful at this altar tonight, this morning. Oh, almighty God, move upon this place, I pray. Touch hearts, God. We come as thirsty people. We come as a nation that is thirsty for your presence, thirsty for your glory. We want deliverance. Oh God, we want deliverance. We want the power and the might of the Holy Spirit's presence in our midst, the conviction of God. They desire not to play games anymore. Some people here in this place, you need to do and repent and ask him to forgive you. You will be set free. You will be set free to this morning. Believe. Ask him freely. He gives you freely. Oh, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's get a hold of God, church. Oh, Ria Sandaya. I pray you touch lives, you touch hearts. Move upon this place. Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin. Jesus is calling. Oh, glorious King, your name is exalted. Have you come to the end of yourself? I pray for the outpouring of your spirit. Do you thirst for a drink us. from the well? Jesus is calling. Holy, holy, holy. And all come to I pray the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. And I'll come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Okay. Can we all stand to our feet with our heads bowed and eyes closed for just a second in the presence of God? I want you to pray if you came to this altar. I want you to lift your hands in the air and I want you to I, I ask yourself, am I thirsty? Am I really thirsty? If you're not satisfied with the way things are in your personal life, walk with God. In your family, in your marriage, in your children, in your spouse. 
If you're not satisfied in your ministry, in your hurtfulness, in, your, in, the, in, in things that you've experienced in your life, Jesus said, if anyone is thirsty, come to me. And I want you to stay, say, say this, this prayer right now. Heavenly Father, I am thirsty. I have a desire in my life to see everything and even more. As the time approaches, as the day is near of your coming, I want to see the latter rain revival. I want to see and experience your presence, your deliverance, your conviction, your sanctification, your change, the fruit of your spirit, and deliverance of my own life, physical and spiritual and emotional deliverance. Hence I proclaim in Jesus' mighty name, and I give you all the glory and praise, expecting this to change after this prayer. Amen. Let's go, give God praise right now. Father, Oh, Move up on this place, God. pray specifically for people stand where you are but you if you're suffering from any any infection or uh, inflammation of your joints or uh, deformation of your joints and if you have tumors uh, malignant or not malignant uh, myomas I hope uh, is there such a word myoma myoma, myoma uh, a, a tumor in the womb uh, I've seen a number of healings of the, the myomas, uh, also uh, uh, tumors in, uh, in, uh, in the breasts. God has, he, he wants to heal you. There are people here in this place, you're, 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 you're suffering because of the pain, because of, the, uh, uh, of those things. And I, I, want you, I want you to pray with me right now. If, if you are that person, uh, you stand where you are. Don't, don't have to move closer or anything. But lift up your hand. This is me. This is me. I need that prayer. Keep it up. Keep it up. Please keep it up. Keep your hand up. And I want people around you 
uh, brothers with brothers and sisters with sisters, uh, 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 turn around and, and maybe few, make a few steps and uh, lay hands on these people. Lay hands on these people. Uh, obviously, we need to have masks on uh, uh, to keep uh, uh, properly. But uh, it, it lay hands on these people. Um, and so, uh, so everybody should be covered. There are people back there. I think they're not covered yet. There are people back there that need prayer. Maybe somebody can, some, a brother can move towards them and lay hands on them. Praise God. So we're going to pray this prayer. And uh, obviously with tumors, we, you won't be able to say right away. But uh, the God uh, of heaven, He has done uh, a tremendous miracle, miracles. And I've seen with my own uh, hands uh, tumors uh, that were gone and disappeared. Uh, I have testimony upon testimony. Recently a sister, uh, seven tumors in her breasts. And uh, she has uh, two uh, CAT scan tests, uh, uh, pictures to prove it before. And uh, uh, the last one she did was November 19. Uh, still seven uh, tumors in her breasts. Uh, and uh, December uh, 2020, and uh, none of those, they, they disappeared. They were gone completely. And Jesus Christ has healed her in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Rabba shara rabba sandaya. Um, I have I have pictures. Um, a lady had tumor right here, uh, growth on her on her uh, uh, hand, and uh, she prayed overnight. It didn't happen. Nothing happened right away, but o overnight it was gone. And she has uh, pictures of her hand without a completely clean, fresh, no tumor whatsoever. Uh, and um, God is doing miracles. Okay, so we're going to pray. I want you to put your hand on your body, wherever the cause of sickness is, wherever the pain is, the source of that the disease. And I want you to say these words with me right now. If you are the one that's praying for your health, say these words. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you with a repentive heart. And I lay down all the bitterness and hatred. And I forgive people that have hurt me, that have spoken against me. I, I, every person that comes to my mind, I let them go forever, never to be remembered. I lay down before your throne, be, be, uh, in front of your cross, all the hatred, all the resentment, of the things that were done to me that I've spoken against people. I repent of this and I command my body right now. I command this sickness, name it right now, arthritis, uh, 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 name that sickness, uh, anything that infl inflammation of joints, name it right now. I command this sickness to loose me. I command you to leave my body by the blood of Jesus Christ, by whose stripes I was healed. In Jesus' name, I proclaim Jehovah Rapha. God is my healer. And I thank you for my healing. You lay hands on these people. Let's pray for them right now. Father, touch them right now. Touch them all over this place. Move upon this place. Touch them in Jesus' name. Touch them by the power of God. Heal them in your name. Heal them in your name. You came and you delivered and you brought deliverance. And you healed everyone who was brought to you. And the woman that, was that touched you, the hem of your garment was healed. In Jesus' name I proclaim the healing and deliverance in this place. Let's praise God right now. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name. We glorify your holy throne. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a, there's a girl here in this place as we spoke of resentment. You uh, were uh, brought to tears and memories of your past. Um, you had scoliosis. There was a pain in your back. You are getting healed as I speak right now. There, is a, a pain, there was a pain and heaviness and restriction in your, in your uh, back, but uh, it's going away right now as I speak. If this is who you are, God is touching you. you you're freely, you can move. You feel that there is a, some change in your body and the pain is gone. If, you, if this is who you are, lift, lift up your hand. Uh, let me know. This is me. This is me. This is exactly what happened. Uh, the resentment issue was the issue. 
and God touched me. God touched me, and you are a, 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 a sister. You are a girl, a young lady in this place. Uh, is that you, my sister? Praise the Lord. Praise God. You feel this, and this is exactly what's happening? Can you describe what happened? The pain? Constant pinching? And then it's gone. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, my God and my Lord and my Savior. Hallelujah. Glory. Anybody else? You got healed. You know that you're healed. There is no, pain, no more pain in your body. Joints. Uh, maybe, uh, yes. Bro my brother here. What happened? Shoulder pain coming up. And the pain's gone. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you. Oh, Rama Shalarama Sandaya. Glorious God. Glorious King. These people are being helped by the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Praise God. Sister, what happened? Uh, so there was a tear in her left side and then there was a pain on her left side. Oh, on her left side, on her, on her leg. And she had an operation. Circulation was wrong. And problems with, his, with your stomach. And it's, it's gone as well. She came with pain. You came with pain here. Praise God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, my Lord and my Savior. You are the healer. Jehovah Rapha, God is my healing. Healing is our portion, church. Healing is our portion. Anybody else? You got healed. You know that you're healed. There is no more pain in your body. Lift up your hand. Let me know. Let me know. Please let me know. There are people back there. No way I can hear what you... Uh, uh, unless you come up here to tell me, I will not be able to, t to, to, to hear you. Brother, what happened? Tense muscles in your arm, ha hand? They, they said it was arthritis. And it's no more. There is no more tense and there's no more sick. Pray God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Brother, come here. What happened? It was with your ankle? And you, you twisted your ankle? And it was painful? But now there is no more pain. Wow, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. I am so excited. Are you excited, church? Yes. Praise God. Anybody else? Anybody else? Uh, you are uh, sitting here. Listen, with tumors, you have to check yourself. Sister back there. Your, 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 your whole body was throbbing, okay? And it's, it's no more. It's gone. Not 100%, but it's going away. Praise God. You feel the healing. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Rama Shalabasandara. Hallelujah. Oh, please, uh, please go through the pain of letting me know through Pastor Garrett uh, or somebody else that they would let me know that your tumor, uh, 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 your tumor in your womb uh, or anywhere else disappeared. And you, will, you let me know because this is the reality of God and God loves us and He wants to heal us. And you expect a miracle for yourself. Amen. Praise God. I'm uh, finished. Thank you. And we'll, we'll see you tonight. Pastor will come to serve and finish the service. this morning uh, let's remember this evening service begins at seven o'clock come early let's pray let's get a hold of God let's come before God in desperation ready to receive all that God has for us this evening God's going to do great things and continue to do great things but let's come with that heart of expectation uh, this evening and then brother Israel is going to close us in prayer this morning heavenly father we are so thankful that you met with us this morning lord Heavenly Father, I pray that our thirst and our hunger for your Holy Spirit will be like never before, Lord, that we would seek you and cry out for your Spirit, Lord Jesus. Uh, not the gimmicks or the workings of man, but the pure, unadulterated power of God's Spirit, Lord. I pray that we would run in the strength of this word. I pray your blessing over Pastor Sergei. Continue to use him to touch this world through the ministry of the gospel message. Go of us this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. If you committed your life to Christ, click the Start Here link so we can help you along the way. If you have any questions for our pastors or any prayer requests, you can submit those using the links in the description below. Have a beautiful afternoon, and we can't wait to see you back here tonight for our 7 o'clock service and also on Wednesday.